Hello, my name is Dirk Kölbe and I have the pleasure today to talk to you about ASME certification. What the hell is that? How do I get one and what is it good for? Now, I'm qualified as an inspector and supervisor and uh, working with the ASME code for more than 20 years. I'm working under this ASME certificate from TUV Turingen and uh, certainly also we are dealing with ASME certificates. But uh, I don't want to talk about these certifications, I'm more talking about the certifications for nuclear manufacturers, for nuclear part, safety valve, or pressure vessel manufacturers and all those other various certificates which ASME issues. Now all of these certificates have one thing in common. They come together with a nice steel stamp which ASME issues to the companies which have passed the audit uh, which is required for the certification. Now, and I want to exp briefly explain to you how this works and how the certification can be got. Well, first of all, many people are still talking about uh, ASME U stamp or N stamp or H stamp or S stamp items. Uh, these stamps, these 25 different code symbol stamps have been eliminated a couple of years ago and now we only have one ASME certification mark. But the differentiation is made with a designator and so we can still talk about companies who have certify, certification from ASME as being stamp holders, which is the common colloquial term. Now, which designators are there and what are they good for? If you decide you want to be a manufacturer of steam boilers, then the S stamp is certainly what you want to look for. Well, S stamp is still colloquially used. Officially, I should say ASME certification mark with S designator or S certificate. Uh, heating boilers, they, have, they come with the H certificate. The best seller is for non-fired pressure vessels, the use certificate for unfired pressure vessel manufacturers. And it's so that in all of these cases the manufacturer is the company which actually welds those vessels, boilers and other pressure items and certifies them to be compliant with the code. So that's the manufacturer. Section 8 Division 2, Section 8 Division 3 is then for different scopes of pressure vessels. Section 10, Section 12 are not so important from the number of certificate holders. They are for fiber reinforced plastic vessels and for transportation vessels. Repairs and alterations, they come under a similar but slightly different program which goes with the National Board Inspection Code and the R certificate or the R stamp which goes with it. The difference between U, U2 and U3 I've briefly listed here. Uh, the normal pressure vessels, they are all Section 8 Division 1 and Section 8 Division 1 goes with the U certificate. There is a limitation up to 3000 PSI or 200 bar. In excess of that, you usually would enter Section 8 Division 2. In excess of 700 bar, Section 8 Division 3 comes into play. Now, these higher divisions, they have more sophisticated design and fabrication methods and, uh, and also a bit more uh, attention on the, the control of the design calculations by virtue of professional engineers and other uh, nice features that are involved. However, uh, another brief view on the nuclear world uh, for nuclear components, there is the N certificate, N3 for storage and transportation containments, parts come with the NPT and safety valves with the NV certificate. For assembly, NA is applicable, for supports the NS certificate, uh, that does not come with an ASME stamp, the reason is the supports do not require inspection and certification by stamping. And also the material certification, QSC certificate comes without a stamp, only with a certificate from ASME. Now, this, the stamp for all these certificate scopes is exactly the same. If you look at the landscape of Europe, uh, last year there were approximately 1,000 companies in Europe holding various certificates and uh, of course Italy and Germany are the companies having uh, quite a lot of uh, certified companies. If you want to be part of this exclusive club of manufacturers, uh, you have to undergo this process. 
First, you make a contract with an inspection agency and of course we and our friends from TÜV Turing and we are certainly available for this certification. Then you apply to ASME, the homepage from ASME gives nice guideline to that. You would prepare your quality manual and your procedures, of course appropriate to the code of construction that you have selected and appropriate to your products. You would qualify personnel and procedures as much as re required. You would prepare a demonstration order including all aspects of your system and program and all aspects of your scope of construction. Design, material, examination, inspection, testing, everything is included. Then we would conduct a pre-audit to make sure everything is adequately prepared and you are ready for the joint review or in case of nuclear certifications, ready for the survey with ASME and us as the agency of record. Now, the survey takes either two days or five days. Uh, there is either one, two or three ASME designates. That depends on the scope of application and on the, on the kind of certificate that you have applied for. For details, you can certainly contact us and we will be happy to explain that to you. For a normal pressure vessel joint review, I've just marked up the typical scope of the joint review and how, does it, uh, how is it continued. First of all, we begin with uh, the manual review on the first day. The team leader, the supervisor and the inspector, so three gentlemen would sit in the hotel, read the manual from cover to cover. Normally after lunch we would arrive on the premises of the manufacturer, have an opening meeting and a shop tour. During the shop tour the, a brief review is made of all the fabrication facilities. Afterwards we discuss manual changes and then the implementation would be reviewed beginning with design, procurement, uh, receiving inspections, certification. Uh, on the second day then we could enter welding, we could enter, enter non-destructive examination, heat treatment, calibration, non-conformances, records and all the other little chapters that are in your manual and that are demonstrated. And uh, well typically after a day and a half or after two days there would be the exit meeting with hopefully the recommendation to issue the certificates to the manufacturer. So, uh, it is a quite impressive process, it is always interesting, it's always telling to be part of the review and of the review team and I can highly rec recommend to participate. Now, I hope this helps you to understand how to get an ASME certificate, how to get the stamp that goes with it and if you have any questions, we have answers, visit our inspection uh, homepage, visit our discussion forum that we have and participate in the discussion. So, hope to see you around, thank you, goodbye.